Mecca's Evil Genius back with you once again. And uh, as we get started today, I want to take care of a little bit of housekeeping right out of the gate. Uh, you know, we've, we've been doing these shows here for, I guess, about a year and a half. And we've had a lot of good feedback from people and uh, even developed a little bit of a following, uh, dare I say. And one of the pieces of feedback I get from people quite often is that as much as they enjoy the show, they, they sometimes have some difficulty uh, carving out 10 or 15 or, or 20 minutes out of a schedule to sit and, and watch something on YouTube. And these, these shows go a little bit more lengthy, lengthy than some things on YouTube does. So uh, that's one criticism we've gotten and that I've taken it to heart. And it's with that in mind that we uh, are happy to announce and pleased to announce and excited to announce uh, that coming up in the next few weeks, we are going to be making a little bit of an addition to the America's Evil Genius Media Empire, if you will. Uh, in addition to this weekly YouTube show that you have seen and know and love by this point, we will begin producing a weekly podcast. A podcast in MP3 format that you can take with you wherever you go. You can take it with you on the bus going to work or when you're working out or you're jogging or whatever. You can take, uh, you can take my analysis and, dare I say, a little bit of my wisdom with you. Uh, to benefit from wherever you go, and I know everybody's on the go these days, and you just don't seem to have enough time in the day. So you can take old Travis with you, old America's evil genius with you on your MP3 player, your iPod, and so forth. We're putting together right now all the details of this, so we don't have a lot of de details in terms of where this will be housed or where you can download it from and so forth. But uh, stay in touch right here. Keep coming back here every week, and we will give you those details as they come about. We're looking to have this up and running by late summer or early fall so that gives you something to look forward to incidentally it will give us a chance to uh, get a little bit more in depth than we've gotten on this show instead of doing one topic a week maybe we can do two or three and go 30 45 minutes and uh, people can kind of come and go as they please with it and and, and partake of it uh, as their schedule allows a little bit more flexible and a little bit more uh, more easy to digest than it is on YouTube we'll still be doing this show though so uh, this this will not go away Anyhow, on to this week's topic. By now, I'm assuming that most of you, if not all of you, uh, have had a uh, enjoyable, a fun, and a reflective Fourth uh, of July holiday. I hope you had the opportunity to eat some barbecue and uh, shoot off some fireworks, and, and maybe even drink a little beer if you were in the mood. And uh, we all had the opportunity to uh, enjoy and reflect on how fortunate we are to live in the greatest nation in the world and how uh, fortunate it is that we can be born in, in a place like this where you have so many opportunities and you can make literally whatever you wish to make of your life and as I thought about that over the 4th of July holiday I, I kind of thought back to something uh, that got a little bit of buzz in pop culture about two or three weeks back and it was something that I didn't really notice much at the time but having had the opportunity to reflect on it and think about it over the very meaningful 4th of July holiday, uh, I decided it was something that, that does say a, something important about our culture and something that maybe we need to address. And here's what that something is. You may be aware, most of you probably are aware by now, that HBO has come out with uh, another anti-conservative television show, this one called The Newsroom. And it's a, a Sorkin show, the, the guy that uh, did The West Wing, so he's, he's at it again. And this time he's doing a show about uh, the news media and the, the news media industry, journalism industry. And about two or three weeks ago, they showed the very first episode of this, and it was uh, highlighted by, or kicked off by, a rant, if you will, or a uh, speech, if you will, by one of the main characters, portrayed by a guy named Jeff Daniels. And uh, it, it was a speech about how America is not the greatest nation in the world. It was kind of disturbing in, in some, some ways. But yet this got a lot of buzz in, in pop culture, and I even remember on social media and that sort of thing, uh, the day after this thing aired, I mean, I saw tons of people posting this little clip and this little rant uh, on Facebook and Twitter and wherever, and they were just they, they were just giving it all kinds of praise, saying that this is one of the great speeches of our time, and it's uh, somehow an accurate representation of what America is. Now, I don't want to play for you the entire rant. You probably have seen it by now. If you are one of the few who have not, it's easy enough to find. But I did want to take, a, take out a couple of small pieces of Jeff Daniels' rant uh, in the TV show, The Newsroom, uh, courtesy of HBO. And uh, I wanted to take those out and examine them because they seem to be very common criticisms 
that America gets from the left, not only on this show, but uh, just in any other argument or any other type of discussion. It's a line of reasoning and a line of argument that comes from the left quite often, and I think it's worthwhile to confront it and dispel it right here. So, we're going to show you two clips from the show. We're going to show you the first one right now about why uh, Jeff, uh, maybe not Jeff Daniels, I don't know the guy, but, but why whoever wrote this show thinks that America should not be considered the greatest nation in the world. Hit it. Not you, uh, sorority girl. Just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in ex. Now, the reasoning that you see in that clip, the reasoning that you see in that little uh, bit of a rant, bit of a speech there, is one of the usual liberal Jedi mind tricks, if you will. It's the idea that they put across that because a small percentage of the people in this nation are illiterate or poor or have whatever other malady of the day, that that is somehow a reflection upon the nation as a whole. You know, that, that we shouldn't, that, that, that it's not enough to, to really look at those who have been a success in America as a way to judge our nation, but instead we have to look upon those who have been failures. And so if there's any illiteracy, if there's any poverty, then, well, just America just can't be that good of a nation, can it? But when you really think about it, and I know on an emotional level, that's easy to buy into. On an emotional level, when you hear that, oh, we're seventh in literacy, oh, that's so horrible, it's just so easy to buy into that. But think it through. Think about it logically. Have not a far larger number of people in our society attained literacy than that small group that is not? Haven't a far larger number of people in this nation riven, risen out of poverty? than those who are still in it? Is it not impossible to count the number of people in this country, whether born here, whether they came here from somewhere else, or whatever the situation, is it not impossible to count the number of people who have improved their situation over time for themselves and their families? I would say that it is. You know, when you, when you look at uh, some of those st statistics that sound so damning when Jeff Daniels mentions them, that America is seventh in literacy, well, you know, there's 200 plus nations in this world. Being seventh is pretty darn good. Uh, you know, America has the third highest me median household income in the world. Out uh, of 200 countries, it's pretty darn good. You know, and then when you go into Americas in, in the 20s and things like math and, and science and so forth, uh, I think that might speak more to the idea that maybe academics and education are not necessarily as big of a factor in productivity as some would think. Maybe that's a different discussion to have for a different time. But the bottom line is that what Daniels and others who make this point overlook is the fact that regardless of how many people are literate or illiterate, regardless of how many people are wealthy or poor or somewhere in between, regardless of how many people live in a bad situation versus a good situation, regardless of how many people are educated versus uneducated in this nation, we all still live in a nation where every single person has the opportunity to achieve all of those things. Every person in America has the opportunity to be literate. Every person in America has ample opportunity to be educated for what good that might or might not do. Every person in America has the opportunity to attain wealth. We should not allow our judgment of America to be disproportionately skewed by those few among us who fail or by those few among us who might otherwise fall through the cracks. Instead, our nation is great because everybody has the opportunity to rise through the ranks and better themselves. The specific number of how many actually end up doing so is irrelevant because everybody has the opportunity. Some will do more of that opportunity than others. You know, human beings all have different levels of aptitude, work ethic, natural intelligence, judgment, etc. So therefore, even in the most perfect society, which one can make an argument that America is, even in the most perfect society, some people will still fail. But if you want to make it, and you are willing to sacrifice and work hard to do so, frankly, America is the place to make it happen. If you are going to be poor anywhere in the world, America is the place to be poor, because you've got a chance to rise out of it. Resources abound in this nation to help you work your way up from whatever situation you're in. But the key part of it, the key, the key thing that a lot of people don't talk about, and the key thing that liberals and, and journalists don't dare talk about, 
is that while we have resources abounding in this country that will allow you to work your, your way out of whatever situation you're in, it will not be given to you. And it should not be given to you. You see, you have the opportunity to make of your life in America whatever you wish to make of it. But keep in mind that your fellow man does not have the obligation to help you get across that finish line. After all, we're all trying to cross our own finish lines individually. But you have the opportunity to make of it what you will. We're no under, under no obligation to help you or make sure you get there. Frankly, that would be tyranny. But you have the opportunity to do it on your own. That is why America is the greatest nation in the world. And then later on, there's another part of uh, the little rant on this newsroom show where the Jeff Daniels character bemoans how Americans are somehow uninformed. Hit it. We were able to be all these things and do all these things because we were informed by great men, men who were revered. You know, I hear a criticism very similar to what Jeff Daniels stated there. I hear a criticism like that kind of frequently, to be honest about it. And, and it always puzzles me whenever I hear someone say that Americans are uh, uninformed or less informed than we used to be or not nearly as informed as we should be. I always scratch my head when I hear that. Because I look around and, and, and I look at America as it stands today and I think, what society are these people living in where, where supposedly we're not informed? In 2012, every American has access to more information on a wider variety of topics and from a nearly infinite amount of sources and perspectives and biases and whatever else you want to name, we have access to more of that than any other point in human history. In fact, a cottage industry has practically been built around this idea. You go onto the internet, you can find information on almost anything you want to. You can find almost any kind of news source that you want to find from whatever bias that you're comfortable with and on whatever topic you want to research about. That's something that, frankly, our parents and our grandparents and times before that never had. No longer today are we dependent on simply the TV news or a newspaper or two to get our information or to, to go find information and, and uh, filter it out for us. We're no longer dependent on that. You can fully investigate, research, or even gather news at the click of a button. And you can fully tailor it to your own needs and interests. You're no longer dependent on a journalistic establishment to do that task for you. You no longer need them to do that. I would argue that today, those Americans who wish to be informed are more informed than they've ever been before. They have access to far more information than they've ever had. Now, some of it's good information, some of it's bad information, a lot of it's somewhere in between. But you have access to more raw information than anybody's ever had access to. Now, of course, there is a segment of the population that does remain uninformed. They choose to remain uninformed, but frankly, those people have always been around. Those people have always been here, no matter what the journalistic situation in the nation at a given time was. Be careful when you hear people make the faulty claim that Americans are uninformed. Because ordinarily what they mean is that Americans are no longer dependent on a media establishment to filter news and information for them. And to determine what topics or stories are, using the air quotes, important or unimportant. Instead, Individuals can now gather raw information from across the gamut. Again, some of the information is true, some of the inf information is probably not, a lot of it's somewhere in the middle, but nevertheless, we all can use our own individual reasoning, intelligence, and judgment as the necessary filters. We do not need trained journalists to do that for us. Each of us individually are fully capable of doing it on our own. We no, no longer need a journalistic establishment to filter for us and tell us what is important and what is not, and what we should be concerned about and what we should not be. We no longer need the Edward R. Murrows of the world to trash great men like Joe McCarthy who are doing a great service to the American people. We no longer need the journalists to trash Ronald Reagan when the rest of the, of, of the America, most of America, thought that he was doing a bang-up job. And at the end of the day, that is what bothers them. And that's why they are going to the trouble and the expense of creating a TV show that glorifies an outdated and largely dying viewpoint 
of what journalism should be. You know, there's a reason that newspapers are dying. It's not just the leftward bias that's in a lot of them. It's the fact that the entire concept of a newspaper is outdated. That we can get our information faster, quicker, and in much higher volume at the stroke of a key than we ever could buy a newspaper that comes out once a day. The new media is here, and quite frankly, I think it's far more useful and far more beneficial than the established media ever could hope to be. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.